The elevator. We gotta hurry. How come? Tom Thomas is going to see the circus. Uh, and what? We want to go with him, can we? The answer is no. Just you kids without supervision. Who said no supervision? His parents are taking him there. Well, be careful. Don't worry. They won't even notice us. Hmm. Well, if Tom Thomas's parents will be there. Hooray! We can go. Wait a second. I didn't even say yes yet. Yeah. Simkanolik, where are you? We gotta hurry up. Tom Thomas, it's time to go. I'll be right there. We're ready. Climb into my hood. Ha! Huh, I know who's going to the circus today. Whoa! Huh? What just happened? I think that the elevator broke down. Don't you worry. Mm -hmm. Emergency operator. <clears throat> um, uh, we got stuck in the elevator. Understood. Please wait. We'll have the elevator fixed within the hour. That long? That means we won't get to the circus on time. Tom Thomas, we'll go get Papus and Masia. I'm sure they can fix it. People need elevators to help them get to the upper floors of tall buildings. When someone steps into an elevator and presses a button, the elevator's electrical engine starts up. It pulls the cable that is attached to the elevator cabin, and the elevator goes to the desired floor. The cable hangs over a wheel, and it usually has a heavy counterbalancing weight attached to the other end of it. This counterweight balances the elevator and helps the electric motor do its job. Hmm, I wonder what the reason is. I think I see something over there that got stuck. Looks like you found the reason. We gotta go and fix it now or we'll never get to the circus on time. You know, we can just have it right here. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the Fixie Spectacular. And now your attention, please, on the high wire. should never get into an elevator by themselves. They should only go in with their parents or other adults they know well. When getting onto an elevator, the adult should always enter first and then the child. When it's time to get out, it's the other way around. First the child leaves and then the adult. If you are taking a dog onto an elevator, make sure its tail and leash are completely inside so they don't get stuck in the door. And there's one more thing. If the elevator suddenly stops for some unknown reason, don't try to break out of it yourself. Press the button that calls the emergency operator and wait for help from the elevator repairmen. Or the fixies. I reached the motor! Turn it on! Oh, they fixed it. That was quick. Now we'll make it on time. There was no need to worry. Stop! Ugh. It's way too high! Tom Thomas went to the circus without us. There's no need to get that upset, Nolik. Our circus is as good as theirs. 
Right, Papus? Of course it is. Thank you. Thank you, uh, to who? What do you mean, who? The elevator repairman. The barcode. And so, what do we do if we happen to see humans? Hide from them, right? And what if you've got nowhere to hide? Then we turn ourselves into screws. That's correct. Where could it be? Uh, where on earth could I have put it? Oh, I'm such a scatterbrain. Ah, it's Professor Eugenius. There's no need to hide from him. He's our friend. Where has it gone? Ah, uh, did you lose something again, Professor? Yeah, how did you guess? It's just awful. Yesterday I started testing a new iron, and today, ah, uh, it's totally disappeared into thin air. Where could you have put that thing? Um, I've got it down to two places. It could be in the warehouse or... not in the warehouse. Yeah, that information will help us find it. Or not help us find it. <laughs> <laughs> Class, follow me to the warehouse. inside each one of them, it'll take us two days. Maybe we'll get lucky. Let's look in this one. No. Inside there is a fan. A fan? Wow, it's a fan. Hmm. And what's inside this one? A mixer. Yeah, amazing. And what's in this box? An electric kettle. Made in Germany, by the way. He's right. There is a kettle in there. Professor, is this some trick? I don't get it. Francis, how do you do it? It's got to be magic. What else? Here's how I think he's doing it. I think the professor has glasses made to see through the boxes. <laughs> of course not. I only know how to read the barcode that you can see on each of those boxes. Oh, that. Exactly. If you look at the printing on packages and boxes, you will often find a symbol with a lot of black lines and numbers. These symbols are called barcodes. Each barcode has all sorts of information. What the item is, what country it came from, and even in which factory it was made. With the help of a special reading device, a scanner, it's possible to read all the information the barcode holds. It really is an excellent system for stores to know what they've got. You don't even need a scanner to do it? I can figure out barcodes without one. I'll teach you if you want. Class. Let's see. We're looking for a box with an iron. There. Well, bring in the professor. Today on almost everything that is sold, there is some kind of mark. For instance, this kind of mark is called a barcode. And this one, a QR code. These marks help us find out a lot of information. Suppose you walk by a building and see a QR code on it. Just point the camera on your mobile phone at it, and information about who built it and when it was built will appear on the screen. Isn't that great? It's a shame not every phone can do this yet. And that's not all. There are also marks that work without pictures. There are electronic chips that can hold information. These chips can be put inside of ID cards or travel passes, and all you need to do is press the card near a reader so it can check if you're allowed to go on through. Ah, uh, you just made my day. You found it so quickly. What would I do without you? Huh? Is something wrong? This is not an iron. Whose sandwich is that? Mine. Yesterday I wanted to put it into the fridge, only I guess I put it into my... Oh, I just get distracted so easily. Look, we need to think this through logically. If you went and placed your sandwich into the box where the iron should have gone, then you must have put your iron... In, in the, the refrigerator. refrigerator! Oh, here you are. Here you are, my new iron. 
Oh, I looked everywhere for you. Thank you, my friends, once again. There's no need to thank us at all. You're always there when we need help. You've even let us open our own school here in your laboratory. And we don't have to hide ourselves. Yeah, that's because you're so kind and you love fixies. The camera. <laughs> Stop right there and let me see how pretty you look today. Well, just don't tell that to the elevator. Bye bye. Check it out, Nolik. Class, huh? You're not gonna get in trouble for doing that? Uh, no. My dad gave me permission to take a few pictures with this camera. No, I mean the picture. You're sure that your mom and dad will like that you took it without asking for permission? But look, what a good picture! You know what, Tom Thomas? You're like a regular paparazzi or something. Paparazzi? They're the ones that take one photo and get millions, aren't they? You're right. And don't care about anyone except their photo paparazzis. <sighs> Did you ever wonder how a photo camera works? Let's say you want to take a picture of nature. The light that's outside goes into the camera's lens. That's the glass eye on the front of the camera. The lens takes the light from the scene outside the camera and turns it into a tiny picture that's inside the camera. Then the picture is recorded onto a special electronic sensor called a matrix that's sensitive to light. Click, and there's your photo. What a great idea! Now I know! I'm going to be a paparazzi. Hey, what about your promise? What promise? To never take a picture of us. We're a secret. Stop. Hey, relax. I'll delete them all later. Tom Thomas, stop this right now. I won't until I get a photo of you. No, look, let's run. You can't run from me. The story of the century, the monster and its prey. Tom Thomas! Help! No, he won't help, because he's a paparazzi. Yes, I got it. That's my best photo yet. <gasps> What's all this noise about? Awesome shot. The first cameras were invented almost 200 years ago. But they worked very slowly. If you wanted to have your portrait taken, you'd have to sit still for a whole hour. After film was invented, cameras got much faster, and it became possible to take about 10 pictures a minute. On a piece of film, everything appears to be backwards. Black parts of the picture are white, and the white is black. It doesn't look normal until the picture is transferred from the film to a piece of photographic paper. Now people shoot pictures with digital cameras that work without any film at all. You can look at what you shot instantly on a screen to see if you like it. And if you don't like it, you can try shooting another one. And today, you don't even need a separate camera to take pictures. Almost every mobile phone has one. Simka Nolik, are you in there? Hey, come out. I'll stop shooting photos of you. Aren't we friends? I'm sorry, guys. Well, your friends were almost eaten alive by a dog. Please forgive me. Want to look at the photos I took? <laughs> sure, go on, show us what you got. We're not in that shot. We're not there either. <laughs> well done there, paparazzi. Hang on a sec. I still got another one and you're in it. I know for sure. Look. I'm zooming in. It's impossible. 
I don't believe it. It's possible. But when did you have time to turn into screws? The same time you were pushing the button. When we're scared, we can change faster than the blink of an eye. You lost. <laughs> Paparazzi. And what are you going to do with your millions, Mr. Paparazzi? Uh, would you please stop calling me that? You got it, after every one of those photos is thrown away. All right, I'll delete them. And do I have to delete this one, too? No, keep it. It's a great shot. <gasps> I never even saw you take it. The catapult. here. There's no way these toy soldiers could have shot it themselves. Now that was a good shot. It wasn't real long and not high either. And off target. It was pretty awful. It was good, but awful. I got it. So what do we do? We need to raise it up a little higher. Hey, fire, Nolik! Why in the world would you shoot at a fixie? Fixies? They're supposed to be in school right now. Actually, I'm on my way to school. How about you, Fire? Why aren't you in class? Because there it's totally boring. But here, look at what a cool shooter we found. Ha! <laughs> what did you call it? You've got no idea what this is. It's called a catapult, guys. A cat with gold eyes? <laughs> it isn't a cat with gold eyes. It's a catapult, guys. <laughs> Catapults are ancient propulsion machines. They were used to shoot stones, heavy arrows, or barrels with burning tar. The main part of the catapult is a special piece of rope. It is twisted very, very tightly like a spring. The rope is then wrapped around a big spoon. And then, if you pull the spoon back, put a stone in it, and let it go, the catapult fires a shot. Ooh, and the stone flies far, far away. Uh-huh. All right, so here we go. Ha! Ugh, came up short. What do you mean short? What are you aiming at? You'll see. The spoon needs to go further back. Just a little. Guys, you're gonna break the glass. <laughs> no, like, now push. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes! Right on target. Now let's fly out into space. Wait, what space? What kind of flying? Who's gonna fly? I'm gonna fly. Ha <laughs> ha, right out the window. Right up to the moon. First fixing onto the world, Nolik. Are you ready for your flight into space? Yes, sir. Nolik, get out of the spoon now. I'll be the first fixie on the moon, yeah. Nolik, enough of this. What kind of joke is this? It's not a joke at all. He's gonna fly into space. And how come it's not you? Because he's lighter. Hold on. Humans didn't go straight into space themselves. They sent dogs out there first. Nah. Chusaka's not gonna fit in here. Simka, why don't you go and let us finish? Fine, I will go. But only after Nolik finds himself a helmet. Hmm, you're right about that. I'll go find a helmet. The catapult was invented in ancient times, but people still use them today. Only now, instead of launching stones, catapults are used to launch jet airplanes. You see, the runway on an aircraft carrier is quite short, so catapults are used to help the planes move fast enough to take off. Catapults can also be used to save the life of a pilot. When an airplane has an accident, a catapult activates in the cabin. The pilot is shot into the sky and comes back to the ground with a parachute. A plain old slingshot is also a kind of catapult. It's just a very little one. But be careful with this toy. It can be dangerous to others and to you too. As for us fixies, the only time that we use catapults is on a peaceful mission. Pabus, hurry! Our Nolik's getting shot to the moon with a catapult! What? And if I meet new fixies up there, what should I say to them? Hi there. And you can ask them to launch you back. So? Let's do it! Fire! Launch it! 
Stop! Don't! Simka! Nolik! I'm not getting out! Just a bit short. It's not our fault. You're just heavier than Nolik, and that's why you came up short. Papus, maybe we can try one more time. What? <sighs> the gramophone. And that's a photograph of my mom when she was little. She sure looked happy, didn't she? Because parents were all happy when they were children. But then they grow up and start getting all gloomy and as boring as can be. Oh, what's this, do you know? A song about a screw? It's total nonsense. Nonsense? It's about a screw, which means it's practically about fixies. Why don't we listen to it and find out? If it's good, we can all dance together. How do you listen to this thing? Like this? Why don't we try to use the player? We won't fit in there. Look, right here it says gramophone record. See? So we need to find a gramophone player. Find what? Let's go to Grampus. Grampus, we found a song about a screw we want to hear. <laughs> We're looking for a player for a gramophone record. Ah, I understand. What you need is a gramophone. A gramophone is an old appliance that was made for playing back sound that was recorded onto records. If you want to turn on a gramophone, you need to turn the handle to wind up its spring. The spring makes the record spin. Then a needle is placed on top of the record, and as it moves through the groove on the record, it shakes a little, which makes a diaphragm, a sort of mini drum skin, start to vibrate. The big horn of the gramophone then makes the sound louder, and we hear a voice or music. The most amazing thing is that a gramophone doesn't have an electric motor or any electronics. That's right, you don't need electricity for a gramophone to play back the sound that's recorded on a record. That's because a gramophone is an entirely mechanical wonder. If you want to know, there is a gramophone in the office of Tom Thomas's dad. It's on the desk. Great, let's go. <laughs> Thanks would be nice. I can't find the on button. There is no on button. You need to grab that handle and turn it. Now take that thing and put it down onto the record. Hmm, it's not playing. Look, there's no needle in there. And where can we get one from? We can make it. Do you have any nails around here? Is this good? That'll be great! Verda, are you ready? Totally. Better cover your eyes. Working, listen. A little screw went for a run, and now without this little part, everything just falls apart. If you think a screw is nothing, take it out, but just beware. Everything will break without a with no little screws in there. The bulldozer was a strong one until there was a thud, and then the mighty giant fell straight into the mud. music playing. It's a gramophone record. Gramophone? I thought it was broken. We fixed this old... Uh, not we. I fixed this thing. Really? 
What a wonderful boy I've got. Other kids are breaking things, and you fix them. What do you say we play that record once more? I used to love it so much when I was little. The Mighty Crane was working until there was a pop. And then the Mighty Giant gave out and lost its top. Five, four, three, two, one, a little screw. Thomas's mom really dances super. Yeah, she knows how to have a good time, even though she's a grown-up. If you think a screw is... The Pack-A-Mat. Uh, Simka, can I have the Pack-A-Mat? I'd like to practice with it a little before the exam. Take it! <gasps> hmm? You're really good with that thing. Good. I couldn't be any worse with it. I wanted a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Actually, you were pretty close there. He did manage to get the hose, at least. <laughs> this is not at all funny. In order to get a tool out of a Pac-Man, a fixie must not only press the button on his chest, but he must also clearly picture exactly the tool he needs. By the time they are adults, this is easy for fixies to do. But while they're children, they must study hard to master this important skill. As fixies learn about new tools, they take exams to prove they know how they work. And if they pass an exam, the new tool is added to their pack of mats. And there's no end to what you can find inside. Screwdrivers, hammers, ladders, vacuums, and even soldering irons. But many of the tools that fixies use look quite different from the ones that humans have. And the reason for this is very simple. It's because fixies have to fix appliances that are much bigger than they are. Uh, I just wish I knew which tool was gonna be on that exam. I got it! You just stay right here! Grandpus! What? Um, on the exam, which tool are you gonna ask about? It's a secret. Uh, it's too bad. But I'm sure you can keep a secret, right? Of course! Then I'll tell you. Today's exam is on pliers, you see? You won't tell anyone, will you? Not a chance! Uh, I'll never pass it. You will! He's gonna ask about pliers. Huh? How could you know that? It's a secret. <laughs> okay, Digit. See if you can get the pliers out of there. A pair of pliers is a great tool indeed. To grab and turn things, it's the tool that you need. Just be careful how you use them. All your fingers, you could bruise them. a lot, Nolik. It's not really me you should be thanking. <gasps> Grandpus, thanks a lot. For what? The secret. What secret? About the pliers. Oh, that. You know, I picked a new topic. Um, I decided that a hammer will be the tool. A hammer? Only it's a secret. I remember. <gasps> the topic I changed. It's a hammer. You sure about that? Totally. All right. I'll try to do it. A hammer is a great tool indeed. To pound in nails, it is the tool that you need. Just be careful how you use it. Or your finger, you could bruise it. A hammer is a great tool indeed. Super. I'm sure you're going to pass. That's only if he asks me about a hammer. I'll be right back. <gasps> Grandpoos, it's a hammer for sure? Nah. A hammer would be way too easy for those kids. So now it is a drill. A drill? But only... It's a secret! <laughs> now I know. There's no doubt about it at all. It's a drill! Uh... A drill is such 
a great tool indeed. To drill a hole, it is the tool that you need. Just be careful how you use it, or your finger, you could lose it. A drill is such a great tool indeed. And if it's not a drill, right. Hammers, wrenches, drill screwdrivers, vices, mallets, saws, and pliers. All of these are super duper great tools, yes indeed. That's all. That's enough of this. I'll just go and take the exam. Yeah. Digit, come on in. Um, Professor, well, what do you want to ask me on today's exam? Nothing you already passed. What? You mean you're not going to ask me anything at all? No need. You're excellent at getting tools out of a pack -a mat But how could you know that? That's a secret. And we Fixies sure know how to keep secrets. The prosthesis. Simka, over here. Take a look at what I found. <laughs> it's a bear. Ooh. What bear did you find, Nolik? You know, it's the one Tom Thomas told us about. He was his best friend in the whole wide world. Until he became friends with you and me. Try to wind him up. Come on, come on, come on. There you go. Now look, Teddy. Go on, Teddy. Yeah. <gasps> oh. Oh, no. Poor little teddy bear. They ripped his leg and didn't care. We didn't rip his leg. It was already broken. It's all clear. A compound fracture. Then why don't we fix him? Tom Thomas will be so happy. Wait, it's not going to be that easy to repair it. We'll need a prosthesis. The human body is built around a frame of bones and joints. And if you break one of the bones, it'll usually heal by itself. The broken bone will grow back together and you'll be back to normal. But sometimes bones or joints can break so badly that it's impossible for them to heal. When this happens, they have to be replaced with an artificial part called a prosthesis. A prosthesis can replace more than a bone or a joint. It can be made to replace a whole arm or a leg. And where are we going to get a prosthesis? I'm positive we can get it from Professor Eugenius. You're right. I'm pleased to see you, dear children. How do you do? Hi there. Professor Eugenius, can you make a prosthesis? What, have you broken something? Uh, no, not us. It was the bear. He broke his leg. What bear? The teddy bear that used to be Tom Thomas's friend. Ah, now I see. Today, with the help of modern prosthetics, more is being replaced than just arms and legs. For example, if you lose a tooth, it can be replaced with an artificial one. That's also a prosthesis. And there are times when a person starts losing their vision because the lens in their eye gets foggy and can't focus. For this, there's another kind of prosthesis. A new clear artificial lens. A prosthesis can also be used to help people with poor hearing. A tiny device can be put inside of somebody's ear so they can hear what's going on. And that's not all. People have also learned how to treat a sick heart by replacing its worn out parts with prostheses. What fantastic inventions these prostheses are. It's amazing what they can do. They help people live a full life. Professor, is it working out? We'll know soon enough. Done. Here you go. Thanks so much for your help, Professor Eugenius. Not at all. Take care, kids. Our work will never end. Appliances are fickle. They
they need a loyal friend. At morning, noon, and midnight of every single day, when there is an emergency, you know we're on our way. One, two, three. Tish. Inside we'll be Tish. all day and night. Tish. We fix things right. Well, now this old friend of Tom Thomas's will be just like new, Nolik. Simka, if Tom Thomas makes friends with the bear, then what? Will he stop being friends with us? Hi, everybody. Hi there. Oh, my teddy bear. You found him for me. And you fixed him. Ah, oh, thanks a lot. It's just like Grandpa said. A friend that's old is better than two that are new. Who's new and who's old? Well, the bear is old. And pff, we're new. No, look, it's not true. You're the Fixies, guys. You're my very, very best friends in the whole wide world. Tish! <gasps> the Stain. <laughs> What's going on? If you really want to watch TV, then you gotta turn it on first. I'm not watching it, I'm looking at my reflection. I'm working on a self-portrait. And which shelf will you be painting in your shelf-portrait? <laughs> it's not a shelf-portrait, it's called a self-portrait. It's when an artist draws or paints a picture of himself. Of himself? Ha! You think you've got muscles like this superhero I see here on this paper? Uh, how can I see exactly what my muscles look like? And anyway, let the artist do his work. Tom Thomas, your shirt! There's a spot! <gasps> oh no! Wipe it off, quickly! It's even worse, so now what? Uh, what we really need is Masia. Ordinary dirt can be cleaned off with a brush or washed off with water. But there are stains that are not that easy to get rid of. Stains from fruit need to be soaked in hot water first. Blood stains, on the other hand, should never be washed in hot water. You can clean stains from paint or rust as well. Only for those, you'll need to use a special stain remover. But stain removers should only be used with the help of a parent or other adult that knows how to use them safely. Hey, I know a great way to do it. What do you use to get rid of pencil marks? An eraser. Only this shirt isn't paper. And so what? Let's try it. What's the harm? Now I've got three colors to get off. New idea. We should paint over it with this correction pen. With whiteout? Yeah. That was a bad idea. Now I got it. You have to use some water. The wash should be better, don't you think? No, you can't wash whites with colors. And you've got a white shirt with colors all over it. Then how about if we try some more water? How much more can you use? Uh, any more ideas? You know what? It's possible we did something wrong. <laughs> Everything you did was wrong. You should have used a spot remover to clean off that stain. A spot remover? No way! Oh, take a look at it, Simka. I think it's marvelous. They painted that white shirt so nicely. Tula is Simka's best friend. She's very tall, almost as tall as Papus. Yeah, she's the tallest one in her class. And she's strong, too. Tula loves to laugh, and she does it louder than everybody. That's just the way she is. Cheerful and kind. Ready to help anyone who needs it, and making sure her friends are getting along. Of course, I don't like that she treats me like a baby, especially since she's the one that's a scaredy cat. She can even get scared of a cute little spider. And she believes in all sorts of silly superstitions and horoscopes. To 
Lulu will believe anything you tell her. Which is really great, because it makes it so easy to play tricks on her. But she takes it all in good fun. That's because she's Tula. It was on purpose, wasn't it? <laughs> well, yeah. Tom Thomas, no! Your mom will punish you for just one of them. And now you're gonna make more stains? Don't worry, Nolik. I forgot that this is an old shirt, and I'm allowed to get it all dirty if I want. And I tried so hard to clean it. Put another spot there. And over here. One in the middle. And a line over there. Splendid! That looks great! And how about down there? Wow! It's like fireworks! Splendid! There's a name for this style of painting, and properly speaking, it's an abstract painting. They have lots of lines and spots, and everyone sees whatever they want in them. Yeah, look! A golden ball by the river! And there's Tom Thomas with an F on his report card! <laughs> <laughs> Tom Thomas, what did you do to your room? And your shirt. You know what they call it? It's, uh, abstract art. Hmm, there's something good in it. I like it. Abstract art. Isn't it great? Ah, oh, my little artist. The tools. Hang on. There are these really cool things that I want to show you. Dad's gonna be so angry when he sees what you did with all of his tools. I'm gonna put them all right back where they were. And where were they? Open the box and you'll see. It's neat. There's a special place in there for each one of the tools. <laughs> Try hammering in a nail or drilling a hole with your bare hands. Uh-huh, there's no way. But with the help of the proper tools, it's a piece of cake. But of course, that's only if you know how to use them. Tools need proper care. If the head of a hammer is loose or a drill is dull, then you shouldn't work with them. It's dangerous. And when you're done working, put the tools back in their places. Or you'll be tearing your house apart trying to find them the next time you need them. Huh. The pincers go here, and the wrench goes over there. This drill bit's too long for this spot. Let's see if it fits in this one. Huh, any idea what this tool is for? For splitting wood or carving stone that chisels what you want to own. <laughs> wow, Simka, you're a real poet. <laughs> now try to answer this little poem. When you have a thing to measure, this round tool is quite a treasure. This tool, right? I know what it's called. It's a measuring tape. Let me measure you, Nolik. Wow, you've grown. You've almost reached one centimeter. Class! I also have a rhyming riddle for you. What bangs a nail into the wall to make sure pictures never fall? A, a hammer. hammer! I was first, and the hammer goes right here. And now I have one for you to guess. If you need to screw in screws, here's the tool that you should use. A, a screwdriver. screwdriver! I was first, again. You got it right. All right, Tom Thomas, we better hurry. We still have a lot of tools here to get sorted out. Humans, just like Fixies, use hundreds of different tools to do their work. Picking the right one depends on the task at hand. For instance, if you need to hammer in a nail, use a hammer. But you don't use a hammer for a screw. For that, there is a special tool called a screwdriver. A wrench is the tool for tightening nuts and bolts. A vise is used to hold a part in place. And a drill to drill a hole. If you need to cut a piece of wood, you should choose a saw. You could use a handsaw, for example, or a hacksaw. Different kinds of pliers can be used for snipping, gripping, or bending. If you need to smooth something down, you use a file. If you learn how to work with tools properly, you can build just about anything. <sighs> Looks like we did it, just in time. Oh, and how about this? Do you know what kind of tool that is? I don't know. There's no place for it in here. Just throw it out. Come on, and what if my parents use it? Looks like we did something wrong here. <gasps> my dad came home. Tom Thomas. I'm in here. Hi there. 
Reading! Way to go, son. Huh? Oh, oh. I don't get it. Where is it? What? I put a piece of metal under the table leg so it wouldn't shake, but it disappeared. So that's where the tool's place is. <laughs> Did you take it? What? I didn't. It must be somewhere under the table. <sighs> and you look under the sofa. Uh, all right. What do you think he wants? He wants us to get that metal thing out of his dad's box. Come on, let's go. You got it. Any luck? Uh-uh. Ah, uh, me neither. I found it, Dad. It was under the table, just like I told you. Huh, you were right. It's strange, how could I have missed it? Maybe you're just, uh, tired from working too much. <laughs> Maybe. <clears throat> Tadish. <clears throat> what? Uh, it's a new word, Tadish. Tadish? Hmm. I do like the sound of it. The video call. Turn on the camera right away. It's me, Simka. Just as I expected. Nolik, why aren't you in school? School? It started? No, but you'll be late if you don't hurry. I'm on my way. Simka, is that really your fixie school? Um, well, actually, it's the laboratory where Professor Eugenius works at. He lets us have our school here. Who's that, Simka? Look, is that the professor? Where? Oh, come on, Tom Thomas. That's the manipulator. Who? Not who, what? It's a mechanical arm. For real? Oh, please show me some of the other things you've got. But how can I show you? Come on, with the camera. Computers and tablets are able to connect with one another through the internet. That's why you can talk to another person on your computer like you're talking on the phone. And if the computer has a video camera, then it's possible to send not only sound through the internet, but video as well. That's why it's called a video call. With video calls, it's possible to talk to your friends, to see them, and to show them all the things you can see yourself. All right, take a look. <laughs> Over here we have uh, chemistry equipment. Uh, and over here... Hey, Tom Thomas. It's good to see you. Wow, you flew there so fast. Nola, get out of the way. You're blocking the view of the lab. I am not blocking the view. Stop it. Go away. You go away. You go Tom go Thomas, what are you watching? Uh, is it time to turn into screws? Too late. He already spotted us. It's just a cartoon about these funny little guys. Can I watch with you? Nah, no, it's boring, Dad, and I've already seen it. Next, that blue guy, he starts jumping. Watch. Now what? I see you run. Start jumping. Make it cartoony. <laughs> now that red-headed character will sing. Watch. <laughs> la 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 Then she starts dancing. la 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 <laughs> These guys really are funny. And here are the super fast moves. <laughs> that was funny. I gotta get going. That's all. You can rest. My dad went out. I'll get you, Tom Thomas. What are you doing over there, huh? Watching a movie. But why on my computer? Sorry, Professor. Yeah, will you forgive us? So how is it any good? Uh-huh. 
It's a super funny one. Really? Yeah. You see that boy there? He's gonna start waving his arms around like a maniac. <laughs> he also crows like a chicken. Cock-a-doodle-doo! And now the boy's gonna go in and chew paper. <laughs> I can't do this all at once. Hmm. A movie. That's what we're watching here, right? People have always been interested in seeing what's going on outside of where they are. And with the invention of video transmission, it's now possible to see what's going on almost anywhere. Now, without leaving your home, you can see what's happening on another street or even in some far corner of the world. With the help of video calls, doctors can help their colleagues perform complicated surgeries. Teachers can give lessons by video, and scientists can take part in video conferences. With video, you can watch a live theater performance in another country. And even in outer space, an astronaut can feel right at home just chatting away with friends and family. And it's not just for astronauts, either. Now almost every tablet and phone here on Earth has video in it. Introducing Tom Thomas. Nice to meet you there, son. And I'm Professor Eugenius, so I guess you're also a friend of the Fixies. Yeah, only it's a secret. My friend, that's a secret the two of us share. And you know, keeping secrets is what friends do. Daisy! 